morning, everyone. Thank you for coming here this morning, beating the weather, it looks like. So we'll go ahead and start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So just a reminder to everyone to silence their cell phones. I think they put this on here for me so I can silence my cell phone. Um, and meeting documents are available for review down next to Commissioner <coughs> Heiberger. And Carol's here this morning if you need a listening device. So we're going to start out our meeting this morning with a bit of a celebration. Um, we have a, a important milestone to mark here today. In 2014, uh, before either Commissioner Karski or I were even around, uh, the Commission authorized the county to move forward with the Enterprise Resource Planning System, which we affectionately call ERP. And for the past five years, um, staff have researched and worked and um, worked with a consultant and determined all the needs that we have here. Um, and through that process, we've been able to move off a um, very antiquated um, 1980s software system and um, pretty much anywhere that finances were touched in the county from a signed deposit with planning to paying of your property taxes to payroll, all of that has been updated and um, it has had a tremendous um, positive effect on everyone in the county and all of uh, the taxpayers in the county as well. And so we're here to, to celebrate the thousands and literally thousands of hours that were spent on planning um, to ensure a, a smooth transition. And um, we would like to thank our fearless leader in that whole process, Monty Wantenbach. And um, I'd like to give you a few minutes just to um, help celebrate this event. Yes, absolutely. Um, thank you, commissioners, uh, for taking this opportunity to recognize the efforts of the, the county team that uh, went through this project. <clears throat> um, so as, as you indicated, you know, this really kind of started back in 2014 um, between Ken McFarland, the commission administrator at the time, and Bob Litz. Um, they were inquiring about a more modern accounting system so that they could have better reporting, and they wanted a system that um, uh, <clears throat> adhered to the uh, state's uh, chart of accounts more closely than, than what we were doing. Um, and so those conversations um, led to a, a project uh, where we engaged a consultant to do a needs assessment report uh, or a needs assessment to look at the solution that we're using here at the county um, and compare that to you know what's what was available in the industry and, and what those uh, those other options were um, so that was in in 2015 when we went through that and then that uh, concluded and it was kind of concluded that you know there are more modern <laughs> solutions out there um, that can meet your your needs and lead you into the future so um, we proceeded with a full um, RFP for an ERP system and to kind of define that ERP means um, accounting um, payroll and property tax software um, is what ERP means for us here at the county um, so like you said uh, that project uh, required thousands of man hours uh, between um, the various uh, folks here at the county um, so with me today, I don't know if I have everybody, but um, I'll point out a few folks that um, I asked to come up today because they were part of all three phases. Um, this is uh, the A team here at the county. So between Kim, Vicki, and Don here, um, <coughs> they were, uh, like I said, involved um, with all three phases of, of the project. So Kim and Vicki, as you know, are from the auditor's office. I think you guys have heard Don's name a lot. Um, <laughs> but maybe not met Dawn before. So I asked her to come up here. She was a critical part of um, the data migration and, under, and explaining how the current system worked. Um, so uh, I appreciate them um, and all their efforts. Um, and then I also wanted to uh, mention a few other folks that were involved with the project. Um, so from the auditor's office, uh, Mary Zeeb for her role in the property tax portion of the software. Rhonda Warren for her role in the payroll module of the software. Um, from HR, Carrie Deaver and, and Maggie are back there. Um, so that was the, the third phase. 
um, and they just use uh, the Tyler Munis system to go through open enrollment. So all county employees were able to go in and, and specify what, what uh, health care and dental and whatnot they wanted for the, the, the coming year. Um, additionally from the IT department, um, Steve Millage, Kevin Nelson, Vince Fluke, um, Jerry Hebert, Trish helped with some of the, uh, the training, um, as well as um, Kelly Nyhoff for her um, role from the treasurer's office. Um, like any major software project like this, there's, there's challenges and obstacles, um, and it was um, th this core group here that, that kind of helped figure out how we were going to um, uh, deal with those challenges and obstacles. You know, do we have to configure something different? Did we have to, as the county, find uh, some sort of different way that we we're going to uh, process things differently or handle things? Um, so kudos to, to this team for um, finding ways to, to make a solution work um, <clears throat> when, we, when we ran into those challenges. Um, so now that we have everything in place, we're through all, all three phases, um, <clears throat> and uh, I, th I think that uh, with the new system, we have uh, a system that now um, aligns with the state chart of accounts. Um, we have reduced risk um, because we have a vendor-supported uh, system. Um, we have better auditing capabilities to uh, track who performed what tasks with inside of the system. And our payroll process has been greatly streamlined. Payroll data comes from our, our systems here at the county into that system in a much more uh, streamlined fashion. Um, <clears throat> so with that, um, Thank you very much for your guys' support. You know, to get these projects started, there kind of has to be a commitment from, from your group. And um, uh, thank you for that, even though that this team has kind of evolved since then. Um, thank you for your support. Well, I don't know. I don't want to hog the mic if anybody else has anything they want to say in particular. Commissioner Karski. Not only are there challenges, there's distractions, and I apologize for <laughs> <the cost>. <laughs> <laughs> Um, change is never easy, and you're, you know, over the years that I've watched you guys do it, you've done a fantastic job, and just to congratulate you guys and thank you, and, and for, you know, all the other departments, too, because you, you, you didn't go it alone, and it, it, you, you worked with everybody, and you, you, you showed a willingness to, um, to do that, so thank you very much. Yeah, and to, and to that point, you know, um, you know, the, the county runs on kind of a skeleton scaf staff, so to speak, and, um, you know, the, these folks all had their, their regular job to do on top of this, and so kudos to them for finding the time to make this work while they were trying to balance other workloads as well. So. Well, once again, thank you. I mean, I think from our perspective, it's um, a huge compliment to you guys to think that from our perspective, you made it look so easy. <laughs> it's like, oh, it just all went smoothly and it, when there are never any major hiccups that we were aware of so I, we just appreciate you shielding us from all of the, the challenges that so, you faced and, so. and to that point I, I didn't mention carol muller so carol muller was the the project sponsor so it was always a good sign when she didn't hear from me when she heard from me <laughs> i usually meant hey there there's some issues here that you need to be aware of um, and some potential changes and go live dates um, and none of that happened we were able to to go live with all three phases on schedule, but uh, certainly as you're going through it, um, you, you weren't certain if you're going to meet all those deadlines. Um, so Carol was that kind of person that that filtered up to, and it was always good news when, when uh, she didn't hear anything. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much. I think when we get to the auditor's report, we'll see some very tangible results yes, of some absolutely. of the work that you yeah, did. No. So appreciate that. Okay, so that takes us to routine business. The first item is I'd consider a motion to amend the agenda to remove item four, an item that the Minnehaha County Project update for November 19, and to remove item 13, an item to authorize chairperson to sign an agreement between Minnehaha County and short Elliot Hendrickson. I think those were just um, carryovers from last week by accident. Gerald's motion. Mm -hmm. I'll second that. <laughs> <laughs> motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, motion passes unanimously, thank you. Uh, next item is to approve the agenda as amended. 
So moved. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Uh, next item, item two, is to approve the commission meeting minutes from November 19th, 2019. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Any Aye. opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Next item is to approve the special commission meeting minutes from last week, November 19th. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Next item are bills to be paid in the amount of $7,675,919.83 for the bills. Second. Um, motion and a second to pay the bills. Any comments? Oh, Kim Adamson, you're going to help us explain how we got the magic number of $7 million. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good morning, Commissioners. Kim Adamson from the Auditor's Office. Um, you will notice that in the bills today, uh, we are making our annual principal and semi-annual interest payments on our bond uh, issues. Uh, we have six outstanding issues at this time, three in the uh, bond redemption fund. Those were to finance the jail kitchen, um, the courthouse admish, uh, uh, addition and a parking lot and the new jail um, interest payment is in that group. Then we have three issues in the building fund that date back to the um, old jail, we'll refer to it now, um, the courthouse and the human services building. So those payments in total are $4,833,000, so a significant portion of the bills that you're approving today. Thank you. Any questions for Kim? All right, any other comments about the bills? Okay, I had a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Next item are the um, auditor's office financial reports. Good morning, Vicki. Good morning, commissioners. Vicki Hewitt from the auditor's office. With the October financial results, um, starting out with the general fund cash balance, um, a healthy 19 million, up um, six and a half million over last year. And we'll see later in the revenues that's um, due to property taxes being applied in October. Um, the highway fund cash balance sitting at 10,454,000, um, re relatively even with last year. Um, and then uh, general fund expenditures are at, um, for total, 47,431,000, so 81.5% of budget, just slightly over last year. Um, personnel um, sitting rel relatively even with last year, half percent higher at 32,496,000. And then other expenses at 14.9 million, 79.4% um, of budget. So some of that is due to um, grant spending that um, has not been supplemented, those sort of things, so. And then revenues, um, saving the best for last. Total revenue at 51,263,000, 90% of budget, 10% over last year. Again, most of that due to the current taxes um, of 39,428,000, so an 11% increase over last year, and that's just due to the timing of getting those payments applied in October. So the Treasurer's Office did a great job of, of getting a lot of those applied. And then our other revenues at 11.8 million, 86.7% um, of budget, those are up slightly as well, so. Commissioner Heiberger. Just a question. Mm -hmm. Is there any correlation between the new ERP and having it completely up and going to the fact that we collected 11% more because we could just um, recognize that money quicker? Um, possibly. I don't know that there were uh, extra systems in place. I think the Treasurer's Office just made an effort to okay. to get those in quicker. Thank you. So, yep. All right. Any other questions? Thank you very much. Okay. So that takes us to next item, personnel actions. I cons consider a motion to approve the routine personnel actions. So moved. Second. Motion is second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Next item are abatements recommended for approval. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, so we have two abatements, uh, and they're both from the City of Crooks Redevelopment Commission. So they're a non-taxable entity, and they purchased some land. Um, we're recommending approval to abate those taxes. Okay. 
So first item, I'd consider a motion to approve the abatement on parcel 60143 for the City of Crooks Redevelopment Commission 2018 property tax on the amount of $1,472.57. Motion to approve. Actually, I think we can, I'm sorry, we can take both of those in one okay. vote. That was my bad. Um, so then it would be parcel 60143 and parcel 82420. Motion to approve both. Second and a question. Motion and a second, and then Commissioner Karski. We have no TIFs outstanding on these properties, or Not there's nothing? Okay. Nope. We did quite a bit of background research on these to make sure we were all in the clear to recommend approval. So. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Any other questions? If not, I had a motion and a second. Roll call vote, please. Benega? Aye. Heiberger? Aye. Karski? Aye. Barth? Aye. Bender? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much. So item seven, notices and requests, there are none. Item eight, planning and zoning notices, there are none. Item nine, petition for compromise of lien, there are none. So that takes us to opportunity for public comment. If there's anyone here today who would like to speak about something that's not on the agenda, this is your opportunity. Seeing no one, we'll go to regular business. First item is a public hearing and second reading for Major Zoning Ordinance Amendment 1905. Kevin, good morning. Good morning. Kevin Hookman, County Planning Department. Uh, this is a major amendment for the High Prairie Ranch Plan Development District. Um, <coughs> do we have the PowerPoint? Oh, sorry. Uh, we'll probably get the PowerPoint up here. Uh, the High Prairie Ranch Development District is located approximately two and a half miles east of Crooks. Uh, the whole development has various sub areas for residential lots, uh, horse stable, park land, and agricultural land. Uh, the petitioner is requesting to uh, make 53 acre property uh, to be rezoned from sub area C to sub area D, and that is. Uh, from primary recreational land to agricultural land. Uh, there's the uh, legal description, and the petitioner's name is Robert Binstock. Uh, and this is the location of the property there. Um, and I'll bring it one more. So this is the original uh, map for the planned development district. And sub area C is that area that's green, uh, and that's the area that's being requested for rezoning to a sub area D. Uh, the High Prairie Ranch Plan Development District was approved in 1992. Uh, the initial intent was to have the residential development, that yellow area, uh, to have a common ownership in a horse stable and a park like riding type area in the sub area C. Uh, the park trail area in sub area C was common ownership uh, but now is owned by one owner, one sole uh, owner, which is the petitioner. Uh, and it's currently still zoned for that park and recreational use, and the petitioner would like to use it for uh, his own personal uses and agricultural type uses. Um, and staff would note uh, at this point that the property, this was became known to staff as the, our, the request was here because of a complaint. Uh, the property owner has had some cattle located kind of on the north side of the property uh, in a small pen. Uh, and this is rezoning request is to make this his pen legal into a new zoning district. Uh, the Planning Commission heard this item on October 28th uh, and unanimously voted to approve the major amendment. Uh, there was uh, opposition to the item at the meeting. Uh, but prior to the meeting, there was some letters both uh, in opposition and in a, for approval of it and support. Um, and I'll show you some photos. So there's the small pen that's located on the north side of the lot. Uh, and that's just in the long kind of a little creek valley on the north of the subdivision there. Uh, and this is the road that's used to access that pen and the subdivision roads off to the left there. And this is the subdivision road, and there's the pen to the left with a few cattle in it. More of the subdivision road to the left is the sub area. And then this is the larger area on the uh, east side of the river that is currently being used for pasture land. And uh, 
that's where I'm at. So I'll bring it back to the, the main map and ask if there's any questions. Oh, I would say, I should say that the commission may vote to amend, approve, or deny the proposed zoning ordinance, ordinance MC 16 164 19. Any chance? Anybody have any questions for Kevin? Commissioner Barth. I believe I was absent during this meeting uh, from the planning and zoning. So if if that whole area is being uh, grazed, isn't there a chance that uh, uh, cattle will wind up uh, washed downstream to Brandon or something? <laughs> uh, we can ask the petitioner a little bit more on that, but from my understanding, the area the east of the river is in what's called the, the RAM program, so it's a, a like a conservation right. program to keep right. cattle out during certain seasons. It's a pretty steep bank there. So. Okay, any other questions for Kevin? If not, this is a public hearing, so if the applicant or anyone in favor of this um, would like to speak, this is your opportunity. Morning, if you could just identify yourself and give your address, please. Morning, Robert Binstock, 47312 Rognes Place, Renner, South Dakota. Did you have anything that you wanted to add to Kevin's um, report? I guess any questions uh, as to his, um, the land actually where the cattle, the, the small pen is not quite right. near. There's a pasture that I put in the SRAM program right to the north of that, and then everything across the river is in the SRAM program. So okay. we've pretty much done everything we can to keep this as good as we can and um, still utilize it properly. Uh, I guess if there's any questions on how we ended up in Park and Rec, I'll answer them. So. Any questions? Okay. Thank you. Um, so once again, this is a public hearing. Is there anyone here who's opposed to this application who'd like to speak in opposition to this matter? All right. Uh, seeing none, is there any other comments or questions? Madam Chair, I'd make a motion to approve Major Amendment 19-05. Second. Second. Commissioner Karski? Just full disclosure, I don't know who else received the email or anybody contact Mr. Brendy yesterday. I did call him up and talk to him. So just to disclose that, I think he lives out in that area. And I've also been to Mr. Binstock's place. It's been probably over 20 years and I've known Bob for a few years also. Um, so just full disclosure that I have been there and I kind of have an idea what's, what's out there. Um, the only question, if I could, Bob, ask you quickly, that sub area, I believe it's C, or B, B, where you have the um, barn. Yep. The only concern I heard from people was that, you know, this is the first step in also putting cattle into there too. Is your plan to do that? No, the, everything on the, what happened is everything on the, basically the south side of the road would be part of the development. Mm -hmm. And everything north was basically pasture land, but they put it into park and rec so people could maybe utilize it to ride their horse or something. After the developers, even a year later, realized that nobody wants to own part of a barn and they don't want a pasture, they don't want any part of that. So they, they revoked all that. So, um, and I don't want to put the three acres in the barn into this thing. It probably wouldn't be prudent with the development anyway. And, but everything north of there all the way to Baltic and Canada is pretty much ag land and we've always used it for cattle. Kind of like to keep using it for cattle. And, you know, we put in the SRAM program to protect the river, um, which is a great program. Mm -hmm. So I'm not interested in anything south of the road, just what's north. And that's great to hear. I love it when I hear people say they want to be a good neighbor. And, you know, it's a whole lot easier than bringing it to us where we try to legislate good neighbors. So um, that was the only concern I truly had. So thank you for that. Any other questions or comments? Okay, I have a motion and a second. Roll call vote, please. Heiberger? Aye. Karski? Aye. Barth? Aye. Benega? Aye. Bender? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. So that takes us to item 11, which is to authorize the chair to sign a memorandum of understanding between the city of Sioux Falls and Minnehaha County for pictometry services. Scott Anderson, good morning. Thank you, Scott Anderson, uh, County Planning Department. and. Uh, I have prepared a short memo for you which outlines uh, uh, the memorandum of understanding with the City of Sioux Falls. Uh, just to 
uh, uh, s some quick background. You may recall like two or three weeks ago, uh, we entered into a contract with Pictometry to do aerial photography. Um, that, that aerial photography will be done next spring when the leaves are not on the trees so we can get a good picture of the properties. And that's a three-year contract. We pay for that for three years. And we work in conjunction with the city of Sioux Falls. And the, the one vendor uh, shoots all of the pictures for the city of Sioux Falls and the county at the same time. And we, as part of the contract with Pictometry, we are going to be paying for all of that. It's just easier for bookkeeping if they just get one check from one entity. But the city is participating with this, and we have been working with them, and they uh, will be paying their portion of that, and that's what we're looking at today is that a memorandum of, under, of uh, agreement or understanding that the city of Sioux Falls will, the total contract price was uh, just about $197,000, and um, this is a three-year contract, so the city has agreed their, to pay their portion of the contract, which is $23,428.75 annually, and the, the county's annual portion is $42,141.50. And then uh, you will see that uh, the contract basically outlines how that's to be paid and when we bill them. Uh, I will indicate or let you know that the uh, all of the legal entities have reviewed the contract. The state's attorney, uh, Drew DeGroote, has reviewed it and approved the proposed wording, and the city attorney has also reviewed the contract or the proposed agreement. So this is uh, just to uh, finalize that, the, the last detail of that contract, the pictometry contract, and I will stand by for any questions. Any questions for Scott? Okay, I think this is something that we have done in the past. It's been yes. a great kind of win-win opportunity for the city and the county to share in this contract. So if there aren't any questions, I'd entertain a motion. Move for approval. Second. second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Next one is item 12, to authorize the chairperson to sign the 2020 per diem agreements for secure and non-secure juvenile detention between Minnehaha County, Lutheran Social Services, and 15 partner counties. Jamie Gravitt, good morning. Good morning, Jamie Gravitt, Director of Juvenile Detention Center. Uh, the contracts that you uh, have before you are for our 15 partner counties. They include, uh, the only one that's different is Lincoln County because we provide community supervision and evening report center services to the, that county. Otherwise, they're all the same. Uh, they have a 3% increase across the board that matched what the state increased what shelter care could get from state contracted agencies. So we feel it's gonna meet uh, all our expenses and, and uh, make sure we're not subsidizing other counties to old kids. Questions? All right, kind of a quiet group this I would morning. Move for approval. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank, Thank you. you. So that takes us to item 14, which is consider a motion to approve and authorize the chairperson to sign right of way purchase agreements for six parcels to rebuild County Highway 146. Project 1701. DJ, good morning. Good morning, Commissioners. DJ Boothy, Highway Superintendent. Uh, we've had quite a few of these agenda items with right-of-way purchases on 146. Uh, today we have <clears throat> the final six that we'll be purchasing as of right now uh, to finalize the, the right-of-way purchases out there. We do have some pending legal items uh, with some remaining parcels, but uh, today we're requesting your approval to execute right-of-way purchase agreements with uh, these six parcels, and uh, we hope to be moving forward with our construction project next summer. Any questions? Question. Com Commissioner Barth. How many more of these are we in need of? There are eight more parcels that uh, don't have the full right-of-way width along this whole seven-mile corridor. Okay. Thank you. Motion to approve. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. <coughs> takes us to the next item, item 15, which is to authorize the chairperson to sign an agreement with the Infrastructure Design Group for Professional Services to con Conduct Land Surveying, DJ. 
Uh, commissioners, when I started at the county about eight years ago, there were a box of about 200 um, documents, records of property transfers that had um, partially been completed uh, the previous several years. And uh, we started going through those uh, documents uh, initially and decided that it was a very large project. We had some lower hanging fruit things that we needed to complete in the department. So we set them aside. And about four years ago, we started working uh, pretty more, a lot more diligently on these um, documents. When uh, the state's attorney supplied uh, Judy as an employee that will work out of our office earlier this year, she started working on a pretty regular basis on these documents and has identified uh, 44 of them where we have uh, most of the sufficient or almost all of the information that we need to file in order to complete the, the right-of-way purchase and filing and documents. Um, the only thing that we're missing are plats. And so uh, this agreement is with Infrastructure Design Group to create plats on 44 parcels that were included on negotiations and settlements uh, over the last 20 years on uh, County Highway 110 where we just didn't file all of the documents uh, at the Register of Deeds. And so uh, along with these plats and the documents that have been filed and have been sitting in our department that need to be filed, uh, we'll complete the right-of-way purchases and transactions that should have been done many, many years ago. And so, like I said, there's about 200 record or 200 par parcel records uh, in whole, but this one will take care of 44 of them. And the cost for this work is about $45,030 and uh, we'll include 44 plats. So I'll stand by for any questions. Questions? Just a comment. Thank you for th digging through boxes. This is pretty <laughs> sad to think that these have been sitting and never completed. So. I will say, thankfully, uh, the people responsible for this work are no longer employed by the county, and so um, <laughs> our team has been putting a lot of work and effort towards it. And, uh, and correcting things that should have just been done differently in the past. Any other questions? Commissioner Barth. Just comment that it shows we actually have a need for a civil uh, deputy attorney to be in your office. I mean, this seems like a full-time job. <laughs> Definitely. Okay. All right. If there aren't any other questions. Oh, Commissioner Beniga. Uh, DJ, do you have a goal and when you're going to have all these completed? These 44, our goal is uh, June of next year, and um, there's a lot of field work that needs to be completed to do 44 plats. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, they're all within a few miles of one another, and so uh, the, land surveyor, the land surveyor's work in breaking down the sections will be um, pretty efficient in that. They don't have to go to 44 different places right. throughout the county. So, um, But there's still a lot of field work and, and office work with 44 plats. We're hoping to get these done uh, by June of next year, and then it will Judy is going to continue working on the remaining 150 of them. So is it going to take four times as long to do those 156 as it's taken to do the 44? She picked this group to work on first because uh, they were all grouped together. It's a big chunk. I know that the remaining 156 of them aren't necessarily all grouped together like these have been. And so um, I used to say that this is probably a career-long project for somebody. and. And we don't know yet uh, if that's going to be true, but it's definitely years in the making. All right. Anything else? If not, I'd entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Next item is to consider a motion to allocate 100% of the 2019 county surplus property auction proceeds of $30,096.09 to the general fund or to allocate $4,429.68 of that amount to the highway fund with a balance of $25,666.41 to the general fund. Bob Good morning. Litz. Bob Litz from the auditor's office. Should I even speak or should I just <laughs> ask for the action here? I mean, <laughs> seems like I was just up here not that long ago doing this very thing here. So. Uh, but yes, what uh, what Gene has outlined is a process we go through every year. We have our uh, annual sale that, uh, or surplus sale. It's combined with the city, and uh, the uh, highway department is the source of a lot of uh, things that produce income, and as as is the rest of the county. And so, what we're asking you to do is 
uh, decide if you want to put all the money in the general fund or if you want to divide that out uh, proportionately and give highway theirs and give the general fund theirs. Commissioner Karski. I'm going to make a motion for option two, which is allocate proceeds from the sale of the highway equipment in the amount of uh, $4,429.68 to the highway fund, sale of county property, and the balance of $25,666.41 to be deposited into the general fund for the sale of county property. Second. Motion and a second. Any other comments, questions? All right. Roll call vote, please. Karski. Barth? Aye. Benega? Aye. Heiberger? Aye. Bender? Aye. Um, motion passes unanimously. So that takes us to item 17, which is also yours. Uh, Bob Litz from the Auditor's Office still. Uh, in the tax deed process here, uh, this year, we observed seven parcels that were delinquent for the period of four years or more. The owner was served notice on all the parcels except RDID 62130. As a result, even though the taxes uh, for that one parcel are still outstanding, legal counsel has recommended that we restore title to the former owner of record due to service issues. Uh, the auditor's office has been working with the taxpayer to uh, bring all arrears current, but it's complicated by administration of a family trust that needs to have all transactions for payments approved by all the members of the family. Uh, as a result of the inadvertent taking uh, the by the county of the tax deed title. The action the auditor's office is seeking is restoration to the former owner of title as stated in the resolution. Any questions? Motion to approve. Second. Motion and a second. Roll call vote, please. Barth? Aye. Benega? Aye. Heiberger? Aye. Karski? Aye. Bender? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Thank, Thank you, sure. Commissioner. Uh, sure. Bob, uh, yes. uh, so their family problem is our problem? Uh, well, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, it, you know, there's, there's a lot of moving parts to this here involving the auditor's office, treasurer's office, and in our state's attorney. And in that process uh, of the taking, uh, yeah, we, we did not do the service on them all. And, and I would add that uh, uh, at the beginning of the year uh, uh, when we started the process, <laughs> that uh, I got the certificates based on the oldest taxes that were there. And the six were in a row, and then the seventh one was a few pages back, and somehow it just got overlooked. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank my you. bills just have to be approved by my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Next item is item 18, which is a brief on two alcohol beverage compliance checks failures. Olivia. Thank you, Olivia Larson, Auditor's Office. Um, on November 13th, 2019, we received notice from the Sheriff's Office uh, that they had conducted compliance checks of 40 licensees, and two licensees that failed were Minnehaha County, um, are processed by Minnehaha County, and that would be 38 Roadhouse and Friendly's Fuel Stop. Um, and just for clarification purposes, because we did approve certain liquor licenses on November 12th, um, none of those licenses had any issues, so we're still good on those. But essentially what happens is at renewal time in spring of 2020, we will need to hold a public hearing for these two entities uh, to, in order for them to move forward. And in the meantime, the Department of Revenue does impose monetary penalties, and there is a possibility for the employee who served the alcohol to the minor to be charged with a crime. Any questions, Commissioner Heiberger? Just a clarification that the Friendly's fuel stop was the Baltic, uh, because there are two Friendly's. Correct. There are two Friendly's. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Barth? I know that uh, we've previously had issues at 38 Roadhouse uh, earlier in my uh, uh, career. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember the ownership or license was transferred to another party, and we were somewhat suspicious of it. and. Uh, I happened to stop in there for uh, a moment, and I, I noticed that the previous operator was bartending, uh, even though the new owner supposedly had had ownership. And uh, I think they also got in trouble for after hours, uh, uh, where uh, a deputy stopped by, and uh, while sweeping the floor, they were just having a couple more, and uh, etc. So this place has not been. Uh, our most upstanding establishment. Uh, I, I do think when I went there, they did recognize me. <laughs> okay. 
Anything else? Commissioner Karski. Commissioner Barth, you've been around a long time, so mm -hmm. I mean, it says the license was transferred in 06, so I mean, it, about when were you there? <laughs> <laughs> Only five or six times since then. But, uh, <laughs> I just was wondering, was it, I mean, it, it, they yeah, haven't had a violation in 13 years, which is, I mean, to have one isn't good, but I mean, the new ownership, at least that's what I'm reading, if I'm reading it correctly, so, yeah. I, Pass don't want to drag up too many past sins of the of the establishment when they seem. Well, like you and I can okay. go there and check it out. <laughs> I might have to. I've never stopped in there. So. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we'll have an opportunity to visit about these when they have to come right. forward for a hearing. So, Madam right. Chair, let me just finally say that although we chuckle about it, it is a serious thing, and uh, there's clearly too much going on of that nature. Thank you. All right, that takes us to item 19, which is to consider a resolution to declare two John Deere Gators a surplus and authorize donation of surplus equipment to the Sioux Empire Fair Association. Carol, good morning. Commissioners Carol Muller, Commission Office. Before you today is a resolution. Uh, the short story is the city had two Gators, two John Deere Gators that they were surplusing. Uh, the value of which was each was $2,750. And the Fair Association was interested in it. The city said they would prefer to donate to move them over to the county and the county then donate them to there. So that's the paper trail that you're doing today. All right, this is a situation where uh, statute requires we do this in the most complicated manner possible. <laughs> and so the first, the way we have to accomplish this is through two motions. The first motion would be to accept the donation of the two John Deere Gators from the city of Sioux Falls for the purpose of donation to the Sioux Empire Fair Association. So move. Second. Motion and a second. Any questions? Roll call vote, please. Benega. Aye. Heiberger. Aye. Karski. Aye. Barth. Aye. Bender. Aye. That motion passes unanimously, so we get to do a second motion. Mm -hmm. And the second motion is to approve the resolution declaring two John Deere Gators as surplus and authorizing the donation of surplus equipment to the Sioux Empire Fair Association. That's my motion. Move. Second. It's motion and a second. Any other comments? Roll call vote, please. Heiberger. Aye. Karski. Aye. Barth. Aye. Benega. Aye. Bender. Aye. Motion passes unanimously. All right, that takes us to liaison reports. Are there any liaison reports this morning? Commissioner Barth. Um, first, let me say that last week when I reported on the towns and townships uh, meeting that uh, we attended, I forgot to mention that Carol Muller was in attendance along with several other county uh, people and uh, I, I felt bad about it when I forgot <laughs> to uh, note that. Um, Next, I guess we had a planning meeting last night, which was the, uh, <coughs> the shortest meeting I've ever experienced in planning and zoning. We had two items and they passed on consent. Um, I had a, uh, attended a meeting of the Southeast District of Counties uh, along with a couple others, including Commissioner Karski. And uh, one interesting thing was uh, someone from the DOT talking about uh, resilience being a issue for uh, the DOT. Uh, we talked about building bigger culverts, wider bridges, et cetera, but uh, uh, surviving the storms, which the DOT expects to revisit us in the spring, uh, resilience is their code word, I guess, uh, to be able to uh, stay in operation, get back in operation. And then I, uh, I went to uh, uh, a meeting of the East Dakota Water Development District and we had uh, a great presentation on uh, uh, riparian barriers and stuff. You know, most people don't know that the reason the river is brown is because of dirt. They have a, a feeling it's due to some other biological process, but it's, it's dirt and mud in the river and keeping uh, cattle away from the edge of the river, which our previous uh, uh, applicant on that planning and zoning thing. Keeping them away from the river lets the grass grow and keeps the banks from eroding into the, into the river. Um, and I think, I think that's all of my reports. Thank you. Anyone else? Commissioner Benega. 
Briefly, uh, Jeff and I, along with Craig Carroll and Kim, spent uh, three hours yester yesterday morning reviewing insurance packages from two different vendors. Uh, we asked for some additional information, uh, but we should have that completed in the next couple of weeks. All right. Thank Just you. A pile of paper. That is, um, that is a job that we are very appreciative you undertook, so <laughs> thank you very much. Anything else? All right. Are there any other liaison remarks? That takes us to new business. Is there any new business today? If not, old business. Is there any old business today? Commissioner Benegat. I've had a couple of questions from people about uh, the fairgrounds audit, and I just wanted uh, the commission to know that the draft has been I think given to staff and management and they're reviewing that before they make a presentation for the entire audit which is a normal process all right thank you all right if there's no more old business I'd entertain a motion to recess the Minnehaha County Commission meeting so move second motion and a second all in favor Aye. Aye. any opposed motion passes unanimously um, I have a quite a stack of documents to sign here so we're going to reconvene at about 10 o'clock okay thank you no raises. <laughs>